His policies do not benefit most Americans, rich or poor. Bernie Sanders' war is with you. I want to know what your main problem is with Bernie Sanders. Like I talked about, I think with Bernie, uh, this is going to be really, really dirty going into the primaries. This is the best case scenario yeah. for President Donald Trump. But, and I don't think that people are right when they assume that if Bernie drops out, his Bernie bros, the brown shirts, are going to be voting for Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. No, I don't think they're going to be voting for Joe Biden. And I think a higher percentage of them will vote for Trump than for Biden that people are accounting for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, We saw a lot of that in 2016. We saw the Bernie bros come into this channel and all of a sudden, well, you know what? At least he's going to burn it all down. He's anti-establishment. They prefer yeah. Trump. Yeah. And certainly on issues of trade, on issues of war, they would line up with Trump more than Bernie. But my big issue with Bernie is that he paints all of his political opposition, um, or he acts as though it's a monolith, where the only people who could ever even fathom opposing his policies must be special interest billionaires. And uh, for, for context, this is what I'm talking about. Our campaign is about taking on the powerful special interest that dominate our economic and political life. Today, we have a corrupt campaign finance system. With Wall Street and billionaires spending unlimited sums of money, which is undermining American democracy. We need to take on all of the corporate elite. We need a government that works for working families, not just big campaign contributors. The way you bring people together is to make it clear that we're not going to give tax breaks to billionaires and large corporations. They're going to start paying their fair share of taxes. We will not accept... Is a hot air balloon? Whoa. It looks like they couldn't find a good vein, so they stuck the IV in his head. <laughs> it looks like one of those little things you blow in a field and the little white part. Just, just huh? Take into on the wind. Wall Street, Dandelion. the insurance Whatever. companies, <laughs> the drug companies, just, just the fossil fuel industry, the military industrial complex. Okay, lots of buzzwords. We <laughs> I was about to say yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Here's yeah. the thing. I think we would all agree. If what he if what he was saying, or at least I guess sort of the premise there, if it was if it were true, sure, Bernie would be the champion of the people, yeah. waging war against the corrupt rich elite. Got it, if you buy that premise. But what if it's not true? What if there are plenty of people out there who oppose Bernie's policies and ideas and they're not billionaires? What if it's just a significant portion, potentially a plurality, or in some cases, a serious majority of Americans who are opposed to these policies proposed from Bernie Sanders? Well then, that changes things because Bernie's war is not with rich elitist billionaires. Bernie's war is, it's with you. So, yeah. <laughs> let's first start with energy, fossil fuels, right? Yeah. Uh, the first example is that this is of him trying to frame the argument in demonizing 100% of his political opposition as it relates to fossil fuels and uh, energy. I'm talking about Wall Street, the health insurance companies, the drug companies, the fossil fuel industry, the military industrial complex, the private prison industry, and the large multinational corporations that exert such an enormous influence over our lives. Okay. Did you see, see a lot of the same buzzwords? Yeah, you know what I love? All again. I love how he just always conveniently says the list of people who should consider him their enemy. Right. He's just very yeah. clearly like, I hate conservatives and Republicans yeah. and Democrats and moderates and people with legs and people who <laughs> work and people who don't work and people who live in America. Like, all of you suck. <laughs> yeah. and, and but people, vote for me. And people who don't have to stick the morphine drip in their head. You don't know how good you have it! <laughs> he's just very clearly the opposition candidate to but, everyone right and this he framed it as always his, his wars with big fossil fuel industries right, yeah. big, and that's what the, these people are very easy to demonize and I'm, I'm not going to defend all pharmaceutical companies i'm not going to be defending all fossil fuel industries okay i'm not defending the bp oil spill but in reality here when he's painting it with this broad stroke his war is against you middle class americans who overwhelmingly like to drive your own cars as opposed to public transit and often choose SUVs. And poll mm -hmm. after poll after poll has shown that affordable gas is a very important issue mm -hmm. to most Americans. By the yeah, way, absolutely. it's even more important to non-wealthy Americans. Hmm. Bernie doesn't think about how, how much it costs to gas up his Prius. No. <laughs> He it's an care. everyday cost. It's an everyday cost for everyday people right. that they see the tangible changes with right. Donald Trump. Yeah. Like he comes out and he makes the economy better. 
and it drives the prices and, down. And by the way, when I say Bernie's Prius, I mean uh, an old shopping cart with a lawnmower engine. Just uh, okay. It's almost as good as my <laughs> mini bike. Yeah. One thing I always find interesting about Bernie when he talks about a specific industry is he's forgetting that, sure, there are people who are making millions or billions of dollars and the company is maybe making billions of dollars, sure. but they're also spending billions of dollars yes. on yeah. innovation, yeah. on fuel efficiency, on uh, hiring engineers, all the way down to the people who are cleaning the offices. Yeah, they're payroll. In. And, and the thing <laughs> yeah. he never thinks about is, I'm going to destroy this industry. Yeah. Okay, every voter that works in those companies, every voter that works in a company that's affiliated with one of those companies, know he's coming coming for you, yeah. not yeah. just the CEO, not just the CFO. He's coming for you when they can't afford to do their work anymore because there's a right. higher price. You will pay the price. Let's move on to something that affects a lot of Americans. One of the biggest issues, health care, drug companies. Right. right. This is kind of all lumped in together. Um, Bernie, I don't think we have a, a clip for this one, but you can just take my word for it that Bernie Sanders hates insurance companies and drug companies. <laughs> lest you yeah, think shocking. I'm lying. There's going to be mm. someone like, well, where's the reference uh, ever? Yeah. <laughs> Everything yeah. he's ever uh, said. Everywhere. Uh, just yeah. find a video of Bernie Sanders speaking, hit play. Wait 30 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> Try and look through the IV hooked up to his head for some reason. What was he's that? vascularly challenged. And it Come also, on. I thought it had Super Mario characters on yeah. it. Yeah, oh. Luigi. Did he go to the children's ward? Gosh. Uh, so he frames this right when we're talking about insurance companies and we're talking about pharmaceutical companies. A lot of, lot of regulation, a lot of corruption with some of these companies, absolutely. Yep. But he frames it as though the only reason that we have private insurance in the United States is because of the wealthy elites pulling the strings. Right? The presumption is that the only reason one could oppose his mandatory Medicare for all program is if they're wealthy elite. But in reality, his war is with you, Americans, where over 83% of you are currently yes. satisfied with your health insurance plan. And by the way, his war is with 87% of Americans out there, you who are against a universal health care plan if it eliminates private insurance, which is exactly what Bernie Sanders' plan would do. Don't allow TYT, don't allow Seth Meyers, don't allow Trevor Noah or the TYT network funded by uh, you know foreign caliphate to tell you, <laughs> well, Medicare for all, uh, socialized health care is immensely popular, right? This is not fringe, this is mainstream. 87% of Americans, let's say it were lower, yeah. let's say it was only 80%, okay? You can't find a number that says 80, they're all, they're all 87 some say yeah. 88. 87 percent of Americans, when you say, okay, but what if Medicare for all uh, required that we completely eliminate private insurance? They say, no, no way, no how. So if you ask people abstractly, do you like free shit? Well, yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> but what if we take away the yeah. shit you currently have? No, 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 no. <laughs> no, I like my current health care plan. Don't buy, it wouldn't make it right, by the way, to eliminate private insurance. Yeah. It's still morally reprehensible. But for Mr. Paul himself, it's not even popular. And something else to take into account, Bernie's war obviously is with you, the middle class Americans, but it's also, he also has a war with innovation, and he has a war, he, for a man who fancies himself a man of the world, mm -hmm. listen, take this into account, uh, the United States leads the world in drug development. Yeah. I think, you yeah. know, you've been talking about yeah. this more, we've yeah. talked about this, uh, it's not even close. Now, the reason our drugs cost more is that other countries freeload off of our drug development and then impose price controls in their countries that drive American drug costs up. It's often socialist price controls in other countries that drive up American drug prices, not only the drug companies. If you were gonna go buy um, medicine or drugs or a treatment or a remedy from somewhere, are you gonna buy it from Venezuela or Cuba or Russia or Iran or Iraq, any of those places, Afghanistan? Or are you gonna buy it from somewhere that has a strong capitalist society that allows for innovation and the conglomeration of wealth in one place so that you can spend 10 years right. and multi-billion right. dollars on a single drug that may not even work. And, yeah, I, would take, even I would take it even further than that because you do have some Americans who buy drugs in Mexico or sure. who buy drugs that were made in, in the USA. In, in, exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're subsidized by these other governments because they don't spend the R&D cost. No. They don't innovate. And so what happens is then it's footed by the taxpayer at a 52, 56, 70% mm -hmm. tax rate, depending on where you're going. Right. So that, that's something else that's important. If you get it in another country cheaper, that's because we're footing the bill, just like Canada. Hey, defend your own borders, go. That'd be entertaining for about, I don't know, a half hour, and then you'd be waving the American flag and using our currency so fast it would make your silly little mounty head spin. <laughs> By the way, uh, hey. hit the notification bell uh, and hit all notifications. Turn them on on your phone, please, um, because subscriptions don't mean a whole lot anymore, no, and not we're not really all that searchable. Uh, if you type in the name of this show, tomorrow, 
It won't show up. Young Turks. <laughs> Even the exact Definitely name. Young Turks will come And uh, please do consider joining Mug Club, because this show that you enjoy, we do them every day, Monday through Thursday, behind mm-hmm. the paywall, and you also get everyone else. You get Roaming Millennial, you get Glenn Beck, you get Mark Levin, you get, uh, who else am I thinking about here? Uh, Other you, people. Oh, you get Dave Rubin. Anyway, oh, that's please do consider joining up $69 if you're still so many people. do the so show many. without Mug Club. No. We the cannot do the show. I've got, mouth, I've got a mouth to feed coming, okay? By the way, this <laughs> is so fun. Oh, 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 I also should have mentioned, next week, we are going to do our 1 billion view live stream. Nice. And I should be clear it's it's more ceremonial we crossed 1 billion views a while ago but right. then we had to remove the videos because of the fig shirt you know yeah. um, so we're gonna recross it we'll also be doing a live stream when we cross the Young Turks and subscribership which should be happening ah, here in the next quarter nice so yeah that'll be and I did I just It'll saw after soon. election time the Young Turks I will say this and I don't want to punch down but technically they still have more subscribers on us so we can you know we, we have a couple it. more months yeah. um, <laughs> it's just it's an easy target right speaking of bit. no next <laughs> big target but huge schnozzes um, what a sniffer so <laughs> this and it's like Greta Van Susteren we're seeing the new and improved Greta we're seeing the new and improved Young Turks mm. Mm. Um, <laughs> I was approved? watching them with Super Tuesday going guys please do join up uh, whatever they're packaging we abs- and by the way we wouldn't ask if we didn't need it okay all these other multi-billion dollar companies like well hold on a second what happened to the 20 slash 30 million dollars that you got in investments yeah. from Al Jazeera yeah. and Google and Buddy Romer we've never received any of that so how do you need money now Hmm. We just need you guys to join up at Mug Club. We're not funded by well, any other multi-billionaires. Yeah. It's because their employees haven't yet unionized. Right. This is <laughs> true. <laughs> they're, they're like the Mike Bloomberg of YouTube channels. <laughs> yes, effectively. <laughs> throwing the money away. Uh, and that they're very great. short. Okay, uh, here's another one. And this one is one that, this is one that I think, this issue at large, but not just talking about Bernie, Democrats will lose. Joe Biden said that uh, that uh, Beto O'Rourke was going to be his guns are. Oh, wrap oh, it up. Yeah. He's done. done. Election Out. is over. Out. Done. Beto over. O'Rourke. That's a big goof. <laughs> probably lost Texas exclusively because of guns. Yeah. And then Biden said, oh, that's good. Uh, you know what? I'm going to have him do my guns along with my <laughs> wife, sister. I don't. What is who's this? <laughs> Which that's, one are you? <laughs> what? I shouldn't have drank that bucket yeah. of salt water. Why am I stopping? <laughs> Yeah, the guy that lost <laughs> twice. Exactly. How many rakes can he step on? I mean, really. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Only he thinks that they're pool cues. Uh, he has no idea. Hmm. Uh, but let's, let, let's get to uh, Bernie Sanders. He always tries to paint the voice of opposition to his ideas, his proposals, his gun policies, as though it must come from some sinister or exclusively sinister overlord organization. The Congress must do what the American people want, not what the NRA wants. Okay, but if we're talking about what the NRA wants versus what Bernie wants, which really isn't all that clear because he comes from the most pro-gun state in the union and he didn't really do a whole lot to change it, still most Americans would side with the NRA because his war, again, is with you, America. 43% of your households uh, include guns. 43% of American households own guns. And gun ownership rates are highest, by the way, for those in the middle income class uh, tax bracket. Uh, I think it's Mm. what, 40,000? Do we have an overlay? 40,000 to Mm -hmm. $100,000 a year. Yeah, they're they're they the people who own the most guns. Now, a big reason I don't know. This is just a theory. A big reason that they tend to be uh, the highest percentage of gun yeah. owners is because they can't afford the armored car and security detail that Bernie Sanders has oh, out there in Montpelier. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, that uh, makes sense. Then. Yeah. yeah, it was a mystery. Yeah. Now it's solved. Well, this solved. is what people yeah. say. Just call the cops. <laughs> people say that, right? Just call the right, cops. Yeah. Right. Well, a lot of Americans, middle class Americans, if you look at that, they would live in the suburbs or they would live in rural areas where police response time might be slower. So. Mr. Walther takes care yeah. of them. Maybe for some folks who yeah. buy a lesser farmer, uh, lesser firearm, Mr. Smith and Wesson. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know Hopefully, what, and, takes and care and of never, them. never forget that a lo- the origination of a lot of gun restrictions were completely based on racism. They were yeah. saying yeah. we're going to limit certain people in certain areas that to be able to have them in predominantly affected minorities. And yet, you see a huge movement of folks who are saying, "Look, if, if we can get rid of these restrictions and let people, regardless of their skin color, own firearms, then we're going to be a better." place yet bernie unironically tries to say that he is the candidate yeah. for people of color even though he's insisting that we should make sure to keep guns out of the hands of minorities well we can't have any more tukey williams running around what hey, he, huh? he's, he's cuckoo for cocoa puffs i think you mean toucan sam and tukey williams is the crips guy what what are they pumping in this thing <laughs> Um, he's like, it's like one of those masks uh, in Halloween where you squeeze the pump and just like the blood keeps squirting. running. Yeah, exactly. Like that's his thing in his head. I think that's what he was going for. Oh. It's a genre. And apparently he <laughs> wiped his head with balloons. Um, 
And the funniest fun. thing, too, is Bernie Sanders saying, not the NRA, but he yeah. slips. And he's mentioned many times that his stances, his gun stances, are not popular with voters. He has routinely cited this as a reason for losing an election. 30 years ago, I likely lost a race for the one seat for Congress in Vermont because 30 years ago, I opposed, I supported a ban on assault weapons. It's true. He also pooped his pants. Uh, he did. Ah, mm. So that, right there at the pause, yeah, one could argue it. that in tandem, mm, right? Yeah, they were the game-changing effect. Yeah. But which one was the leading? You know, who knows? <laughs> who right? knows? Yeah, I yeah, have knows. no idea. So <laughs> which is it, Bernie? Which is it? Is it the fact that most Americans want your kind of gun policy, or you lost in Vermont of all places, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, uh, because of your gun policy? Let's move on to the next one. This goes back to your point. Um, the claim from Bernie Sanders about tax cuts, right? He loves to say that Donald Trump, maybe the same thing with George W. Bush, the tax cuts are only about benefiting, and these are the people pulling the strings with the election. Maybe you've bought this. The billionaire class. The billionaire class provides hundreds of millions of dollars in campaign contributions to Republicans. And now is payback time. What this legislation is about, Jake, is giving 50% of the tax benefits to the top 1%. I love that he said billionaire contributions to Republicans. What happened to Bloomberg yeah. and Steyer? Yeah. Exactly. That's the GDP of all of South America combined <laughs> yeah. that they Awkward. spent just to be raped on the stage by Elizabeth Warren. Exactly. That is, a, that is an expensive raping. Good look. Is. It is an expensive sexual look. accosting on a national platform. His war, Bernie Sanders' war, is with you because the Trump tax cuts, they reduced the income tax bill for those, by the way, those earning a median income in the country by nearly 60%. Dang. Household income for median income families, again, is up $4,000. An Boom. increase four times the size of what we saw under eight years of Obama. And here's something else. His war is not with big, but his war is with the vast majority of uh, businesses that are American small businesses, yeah. right? The Trump tax cuts ha have helped them a lot, and his approval rating just hit an all-time high among small business owners. Again, huge portion, depending on which numbers you use, a majority of Americans employed by small to mid-sized businesses. Yeah. They're yeah. not Bernie voters. So Bernie, he's not waging war against Amazon and Facebook. He is waging war against you, the mom and pop shops down the street. Yeah, and yeah. with Bonvino and with Louder with Crowder. These are small businesses. And, and he's picking an issue that most people are doing well. Most people are happy with how the economy is going. And it's like, oh, 50% of the tax benefit goes to the people that pay the absolute most taxes right. in the country. Right. That's not a bad thing. And we'll let, and let, <laughs> us not for, pay them. let us not forget that he is openly admitted he is going to increase tax yes. on the yes. middle class. Yeah. He just, he just oh, anyone, said, anyone over 29000 a year. Right. Yeah. Yeah. If yeah, for you the healthcare cash. are paying yeah. any of those taxes, you are going to oh. pay more under Bernie. Bernie, it, he tries to frame it. And I think a lot of people have bought this. This is what bothers me so much about Bernie, that his war is with billion uh, billionaires and multi-corporate, multinational yeah. conglomerate corporations. I'm trying to fit in all the buzzwords here. Yeah, it's very it's difficult. He does it well. And, yeah. and I don't have the I don't have the Bain poison mask <laughs> on my forehead. <laughs> He always cloaks it as that, but Bernie's war, I want you to look into the policies. I want you to look like Bill said about who will see a tax increase. I want you to look into the polls and the fact that Medicare for all would be mandatory. There would be no more private insurance. I want you to look into what his energy policies would do and what they have historically done with gas prices for the average middle class Americans. Bernie's war, I want to be as clear as humanly possible here. His war is not with the wealthy elite. His policies do not benefit most Americans, rich or poor, Bernie Sanders' war is with you. Hey, if you like this segment, subscribe or hit one of these videos playing in boxes. Hit the notification bell and all notifications because subscriptions don't necessarily mean a whole lot. I worked hard enough for it. Can you see this red welt? This red welt on my head from, it was this, this came from this. Uh, it wasn't very smart. I should have pantomimed it. That's a little inside baseball with, with theater nomenclature. Uh, it's also taken, oh, 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 oh. This segment is taken from a full show on that Thursday. So you should go watch the full show if you like it. You probably like the full show. And if you don't, you should get you should get the hell out.